Hello everyone, I'm Drew Wei Han from Raffles Institution Year 56 and I'm participating in the Coast Space Rescue U19 category. I started off doing rescue first steps last year with VRCAP and SG Open 2020 and moved to this category early this year. I'll be covering my main strategy and my learning experiences in this video. Here's a quick summary of the challenge. Red, cyan and black objects will spawn all over the map in specific regions. The scoring system revolves around the robot collecting and depositing the objects into the orange zone and points are scored upon pickup and deposit. There are also a number of obstacles around the map that could hinder the robot's movement. The main goal in the challenge mission is to collect the optimal combination of objects and deposit as many times as possible within the time limit to maximize the score. The main priority is thus to ensure that the robot can find the objects and deposit zones quickly. To do so, the program makes use of vector maps and coordinate targeting functions. This proved to be a highly effective method of navigation, allowing for an upper limit of 5 deposits of a set of 2 red, 2 cyan, and 2 black objects, with an overall score of about 3000. The current system works well, but it can still be improved. Now for the analysis. To address this challenge, I've broken it down into 3 parts. 1. Navigating the map. 2. Targeting specific parts of the map and 3. Picking up objects. Under each section, there are a few functions that help to achieve the overall goal. On to part 1. A basic wall avoidance is necessary to back the vector maps up as a failsafe if the robot gets too close to a wall. It calculates a steering rate so that the robot can turn away from walls to avoid collisions. The value of steer scales proportionately with the magnitude of the ultrasonic sensor's readings. The robot has to move around the map without running into obstacles or going out of bounds. As such, OpenCV is used to analyze the map to calculate a field of vectors and the algorithm makes use of the current position of the robot to change its direction such that it can avoid obstacles. Other vectors are generated in order to attract the robot towards desirable regions. A heat penalty is also applied to attractive vectors to ensure that the robot will not concentrate its search area. However, the vector maps function is hindered by the presence of three randomly generated signal loss zones on the map, where the position of the robot is set to 0, 0. Nevertheless, it is possible to calculate the final displacement of the robot after a set time, say 1 loop or 0 0.06 seconds. With this information, it becomes extremely easy to extrapolate the robot's future position. However, there is no information available about the actual velocity of the robot in the simulation. Hence, it is necessary to derive this myself by experimenting in the simulator. I was able to apply a linear model to a scatter plot of the velocity of the robot against the value of the speed variable. This will allow me to use the speed variable to find the robot's actual velocity on the map via interpolation. Overall, this position extrapolating function is extremely useful in countering the effects of signal loss zones. Apart from this, directed movement is required to have the robot move to deposit zones and support objects quickly. Here, proportional steering is used where the robot turns faster the larger the angle between the direction it is currently facing and the direction that it needs to go in. For example, steer will be larger when facing A than B. This function is applied to support objects and deposit zones since both can be targeted with a set of discrete coordinates. The robot will also calculate the straight line distance between it and the points that it needs to reach on the map so that it can target the closest one. For the scoring strategy, the robot will attempt to pick up a set of two red, two black, and two cyan objects before depositing, which can then spawn super plus objects that will be collected later on for more points. The chart here shows the potential minimum and maximum score from each deposit, including the super objects generated. With the additional 360 bonus points, the RRBPCC combination easily beats out the other combinations of objects. In terms of picking up, the function will be executed once a value within a set range of RGB values is detected, which indicates that the robot is passing over either a red, cyan, or black object. This makes the function more consistent in finding objects. Super objects are collected when either 4 of them have spawned or when there is only 1 minute remaining. This part of the code is only executed once the robot has enough capacity to carry all of the super objects. Otherwise, the robot will deposit the objects it is currently carrying before beginning the search. As mentioned earlier, the robot will head for the closest super object first and will attempt to pick up once it is close enough to the object. It slows down when it is within a certain radius of the object so that it can make more precise adjustments to its current bearing. Moving on to debugging. 
Usually, this involves isolated tests of the function, either alone or with other already tested functions necessary for it to work, so that any problems can be identified easily. This also creates an order in which the functions should be coded, since many of them tend to build off each other. Once anomalous behavior is detected, the next step is to check through the code for any visible syntax or mathematical errors. Secondary options include printing out individual variables and constructing small-scale tests, which can take much longer. To conclude, the current program is highly effective and reliable in a single-player scenario, but it can still be affected by object depletion in 1v1 scenarios. Further improvements can be made to the coordinate targeting system by implementing a shortest path algorithm to optimize the route that the robot takes. I attempted to code my own pathfinding function but had to abandon it at the debugging stage due to severe time constraints. I had a few learning points while preparing for this competition. I had to do some pre-calculations in Python, which necessitated learning a new programming language. Meanwhile, writing and debugging these functions taught me to break a problem down into simple parts that I am able to solve with what information I have, allowing me to find a solution faster. I also realized the need to know when it is time to cut my losses and stop, especially when I am facing a lack of time. In closing, I want to bring up a quote that seemed to apply to this category quite a lot. It always seems impossible until it's done. Building the program up from nothing can look like a daunting task, but at the end of it all, when I look back on the progress that I have made, my initial fear of the learning curve felt almost laughable. That's all from me, thank you for your attention, and have a great day. Thank you.